Welcome back to the channel. This is Mild Use, my Iron Man account. And in the last video, we accomplished a lot of things I wanted to get done. We got the Warp Scepter and the Zombie Axe, which were two upgrades to my equipment. We also got 73 Construction, which is quality of life improvements for my PVMing. We knocked out some of the Scurious boss and then went back to Barrows, and we finished up that episode by completing a Barrows set. Since completing the full Guthen set, I've used it a lot at Gargoyles for Slayer, and it's super useful just all around in Slayer when I'm trying to heal up without food. So in this video, we're going to start off with some clues. I've made it a point to do the clues as I get them because I know a lot of the rewards in the clues will be worth it. It's just hard for me sometimes to leave the activity that I'm doing to do the clues. Um, but like I said, it's a work in progress, so we'll keep doing it. So while I was doing these clues, I was trying to come up with a new goal. And I think 94 crafting is my new goal. At 94 crafting, you can boost to 98 with a mushroom pie. And I understand that you can boost to 98 um, from level 93 crafting, but I don't want to worry about spicy stew boosting because that's just a pain in the ass. So 94 crafting is the goal. But with 94 crafting comes a lot of seaweed runs and a lot of mining sand. So the first step in this 94 crafting goal for me was completing Beneath Cursed Sands so that I could use the circlet of water when mining sand in the desert. Now, the circlet of water is a wearable tiara that you charge with water runes. When you're wearing it in the desert, it acts as water skins, so I don't need to carry those in my inventory when mining sand. But like I just mentioned, in order to get the circlet of water, we had to complete Beneath Cursed Sands, and I remember doing this quest on my main account, and I remember the second boss fight being a little bit challenging, so I was a little bit worried for my Iron Man with our lower level gear, such as the rune crossbow and broad bolts, but it went pretty well. We didn't even end up using all the food and potions in our inventory. And then was on to the last boss fight, which was easier than the second boss fight. I know a lot of people say that. But after completing this quest, we got the circlet of water, which we could then take back to the bank and charge with water runes. The circlet of water can be charged with five water runes per charge, and it can actually hold up to 500,000 charges at a time, so I don't think you'll ever run out of charges if you ever wanted to fully charge it. I used the seaweed calculator online, and it told me that I needed roughly 75,000 buckets of sand and 12,000 giant seaweed. So the next thing I needed to do was buy 75,000 empty buckets, and this cost me a couple hundred K. And then with these empty buckets, I could take it to the quarry in the desert and deposit 25,000 at a time. So after getting all my empty buckets, I immediately started mining my sand, and I quickly had to turn off the Runelight plugin that told me how much sand I had in my inventory and in the grinder. I think it just makes long grinds like this easier if I don't know what number I'm on. So we quickly hit 10k sand, and roughly every hour I was trying to do a seaweed run because I knew I would need a lot in the future. So we kept mining and mining until we hit the first 25k mark, and every 25,000 buckets of sand cost 1.25 million. So this quickly drained my cash stack. I had to stop every once in a while to do battle staves and alk those for some profit, as well as doing a little bit of slayer here and there just to get some more alkables. So it took me about two more days to finish the next 50,000 buckets of sand, and every hour on the hour I was trying to finish my seaweed runs, and you can see, by the end of the 75,000 buckets of sand, I had just over 4,000 seaweed, which is quite far away from our goal of 12,000. Now that I had 75,000 buckets of sand and a good amount of seaweed to work with, I wanted to try out Super Glass Make because this is the spell that I'm going to use to get all of my molten glass. I used the Tome of Fire and a Staff of Air so that the only runes I had to use were Astral Runes. When using Super Glass Make, if you use a ratio of 3 seaweed to 18 buckets of sand, you average about 1.6 glass per sand. However, when you use the 3 to 18 ratio, some glass will fall on the ground. And when this happened, I waited until it built up to about 25 glass on the ground, and then I picked it up all at once and banked it. But this is the best way to get the most glass out of your sand and seaweed. So as you can see, we were able to get just over 45,000 molten glass from all of that seaweed. So from here on, I decided to go really hard on the seaweed runs, and then I needed a short-term goal so that I had something to do in between. So that's where pest control and barrows came into play. I know that I want to get the Western Province Hard Diary done soon, but I don't even have Void yet. So my initial thoughts were that I would get the range set, 
and then 400 extra points so that when I'm ready for Elite Void, I could just run over and buy it. However, I think plans changed once I got more towards the end of that goal. I decided instead to buy a full range set and the Mage Helmet, and then when I'm ready to get Elite Void, I'll just come back for those 400 points. Having Void unlocked will help me a ton in the future, especially when it comes to Chambers of Zarek or Zolra, because it's easy to switch into different styles without having a ton of stuff in my inventory. The full set of ranged Void costs 850 pest control points, and then the additional Mage Helmet costs 200 points, so in total I needed 1050 points. Luckily, I have one of the tiers of the combat achievements completed, so on the veteran pest control ship, I actually get 6 points per game. So I saved up all 1050 points and bought everything all at once. So after pest control was completed, I decided to go back to Barrows in between each seaweed run, but unfortunately my luck was just not there throughout these runs. Here's what the log was looking like when we started. We ended the last video at 300kc, so that's where we're picking up. We're still hunting for Aram's and Carol's robe tops, so hopefully in the future we'll get those. Our first drop of this video came in at KC310, and unfortunately it was another Torag's Hammers. At this point, this is my third Torag's Hammers drop, so this is starting to piss me off, but like I said last video, any drop is a good drop at Barrows, so I don't feel like I'm totally wasting my time there. At KC number 315, we got another great drop to add to our collection log. This is Darox Plate Body, and now we're only missing the Darox Great Axe to complete that set. And then we were lucky enough to get a back-to-back -back drop at KC number 316. Unfortunately, this was a duplicate Guthin's Chain Skirt, but we'll take it. And then on KC number 318, which was actually my first chest of this day, we did get another unique piece, which was a Varox Helmet. This helmet is great because it's really tanky and has prayer bonus. So if you're a lower level player and you need some extra defense for the fight caves, this might be a good option. And strangely, we did get another back-to-back -back drop. This time it was a duplicate Darox plate legs, which is worth a lot of money, so maybe that will go into Death's Coffer. Here's what the collection log was looking like at KC number 330. At KC number 332, we did get an Aram's piece, but it was the wrong one. But now we have the Aram's staff, which will probably never be useful, but at least it's cool to have. Unfortunately, after that Aram staff, we did go quite dry. You can see here at KC number 375, we still hadn't gotten another drop from Barrows, but we did finish the medium combat task, Pray for Success, which means I took no damage from any of the Barrows brothers throughout the entire run. I have no clue how I got that finished with this gear, but it's cool to see. So over 60 KC later, we did get another piece, but it was a duplicate Guthin's Chain Skirt. So that's number four to our log which is a little bit ridiculous, but oh well. And then to finish off the 400 KC, we did get another unique piece, which was a Varox Flail. The Varox set isn't super useful, but maybe if I complete it, I could use it on the Chaos Ellie in the future. So we need about 2,000 more giant seaweed. So hopefully by the next video, I'll have all the resources needed for 94 crafting, and maybe I'll make some progress towards that goal. At the moment, I can't even really benefit from 94 crafting because I don't have Monkey Madness 2 done yet. So maybe in the close future, I'll knock that out. I'm just dreading having to complete all those Grandmaster quests again. I'm sure I'll also knock out some more Barrows to try to get those pieces that I'm missing, and then finish up the Western Province Hard Diary so I can unlock Elite Void. If you like this video and you want to see more, leave it a thumbs up and consider subscribing and check out one of my last videos. See ya.